He's bringing the book. So, yeah. So while he's bringing the books, I'll just read some prayers in glorification of Lord Advaita Acharya. And this is by Sarvabhum Bhattacharya. And there are nine, eight prayers plus an additional one. Let me surrender to Sri Advaita Acharya, who, is, who with Tulsi leaves flowers, waters from the Ganges ashore, and loud calls of love, worshipped Lord Gora and begged him to appear. Let me surrender to Sri Advaita Acharya, attracted by his loud calls, the golden lord of Golok, Vrindavan, who is the ocean of ecstatic love, appeared in Sri Navadweep. Let me surrender to Sri Advaita Acharya, who by making the moon of Lord Chaitanya rise, Flooded the world with love, with a love even Brahma and the great demigods cannot attain. Hmm. Let me surrender to Srila Advaita Chari, whose mercy is beyond understanding, and by whose request alone all powerful Lord Chaitanya disappeared from this world. Let me surrender to Srila Advaita Chari, who is non different from the form of Mahavishnu and whose parts and parcels are Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva engaged in creation, maintenance, and destruction of the worlds. Let me surrender to Srila Advaita Acharya, who is worshipped by all, who is attained only by devotional service, and who, as is heard in a certain Vedic literature, because he is, the Lord, he is Lord Shiva's shelter, has a name and glory like Lord Shiva. Let me surrender to Srila Advaita Chari, who is, who is flooded with love for Lord Chaitanya, and whose beloved wife Sita Devi and son Achyutananda are also filled with love. <clears throat> Let me surrender to Srila Advaita Charya, whose heart is Lord Gora's eternal home, who is named Advaita because he is not different from Lord Nityananda, and who is named Acharya because he teaches devotional service. A person whose intelligence is pure, and who every morning happily reads these eight verses glorifying Lord Advaita, the husband of Sita attains devotion for his lotus feet and becomes dear to him. So that's eight prayers written by Srila Sarva Bhoma. Acharya. Yeah, just put the uh, first verse from the chapter six, I believe it is. Yeah. Yeah, first verse. <clears throat> Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vindha Jaya 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 Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vindha Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda 
झाय द्वैत चंद्र झाय घोर भक्त वृंदान सो बिगिन दिस इज फ्रॉम आदि लीला चैप्टर सिक्स एंड वो बिगिन विद वर्स नंबर वन एंड गो टू वर्स नंबर ट्वेल्व ओके वंदेत श्री अद्वैतचर्य आर्भुत चेस्थित ये प्रसाद अजपीतरूपनिपयत नक्चुअली द बेंगा दू दैट डिफरेंट वंदेत श्री अद्वैतचर्य अभूत चेस्थित ये प्रसाद अजिनो पी तत्सूपनिपयत वंदे थम श्रीमद अद्वैतचार्य अभूत चैस्थित ये प्रसाद अजनौपी तत्सूपनिपयत वंदे थम श्रीमद्वैतचार्य अभूत चैस्थित ये प्रसाद अजनौपी तत्सूपनिपयत One day, I offer my respectful obeisances, tum, unto him. Shrimat, with all opulences, Advaita Acharya, Sri Advaita Acharya, Abut the Chaste Tum. Whose activities are wonderful. Yasya, of whom, prasadat, by the mercy, agya api, even a foolish person, sat sarupam, his characteristics, nirupayat. May describe. Translation: I offer my respectful obeisance to Sri Advaita Chari, whose activities are all wonderful. 
By his mercy, even a foolish person can describe his characteristics. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrindam All glories to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All glories to Lord Nityananda. All glories to Dvaita Chari and all glories to all the devotees of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Pancha Sloki Kahila Sri Nityananda Tadvam Sloka Daya Kahi Advaita Charyer Mahatva. In five verses, I have described the principle of Lord Nityananda. Then, in the following two verses, I will I will describe the glories of Sri Advaita Charya. Mahavishnu Jagat Karta, Mahavishnu Jagat Karta, Maya Yaya Surjit. Um, <clears throat> no. Mahavishnu Jagat Karta. Maya ya ya srinja ada tasya avatar eva yam advaita charya ishvara. Lord Advaita Charya is the incarnation of Mahavishnu, whose main function is to create the cosmic world through the actions of Maya. Advaita Charyam harina dvatam acharyam bhakta samsanat bhakta avatara ishadtam acharyam asraye because he is non-different from Hari, the Supreme Lord, he is called Advaita and because he propagates the cult of devotion, he is called Acharya. He is the Lord in the incarnation of the Lord's devotee, therefore I take shelter of him. Advaita Charya Goshani Shaksha Ishwaram Yanhara Mahima Nahe Jivera Gochara. <clears throat> Sri Advaita Charya is indeed directly the supreme personality of God and Himself. His glory is beyond the conception of ordinary living beings. Mahavishnu Sritta Karena Jaga Adhikarya Tanha Avatara Shakshat Advaita Acharya Mahavishnu performs all the functions for the creation of the universes. Sri Advaita Acharya is his direct incarnation. Try to remember that verses. Mahavishnu performs all the functions for the creation of the universes. Sri Advaita Acharya is his direct incarnation. So you now you can get the identity of Advaita Acharya. Ye Purusha Shristi Tistiti Karena Mayaya Ananta Brahmananda Shristi Karena Lilaya. That Purusha creates and maintains with his external energy. He creates innumerable universes in his pastimes. Ichaya Ananta Murti Karena Prakash. Eka Eka Murti Karena Brahmade Brahmande Pravesh. By his will, he manifests himself in unlimited forms in which he enters each and every universe. Se Purusheda Amsam Advaita Nahikichu Beda Sarira Vesha Tanra Nahika Vijeda. Sri Advaita Chari is a plenary part of that Purusha and so is not different from him. Indeed, Sri Advaita Chari is not separate but is another form of that Purusha. In other words, the original Supreme Personality of Godhead. Sahai Karena Tara Laihi Aya Pradana Koti Brahmanda Karena Ichaya Nirvana. He, Advaita Charya, helps in the pastimes of the Purusha with whose material energy and by whose will he creates innumerable universes. So here's today's verse Jagamangala Advaita Mangala Gunadama Mangala Charita Sada Mangala Yaha Nama. Sri Advaita Charya is all auspicious to the world, for he is the reservoir of all auspicious attributes. His characteristics, activities, and name are always auspicious. Hmm. 
Srila Prabhupada's purport. Sri Advaita Acharya, who is an incarnation of Mahavishnu, is an Acharya or teacher. All his activities and all the other activities of Vishnu are auspicious. Anyone who can view the all auspiciousness in the pastimes of Lord Vishnu also becomes auspiciously simultaneously. Therefore, Lord Vishnu is the fountainhead of auspiciousness. Anyone who is attracted by the devotional service of Lord Vishnu can render the greatest service to the human society. <clears throat> Rejected persons of the material world who refuse to understand pure devotional service as the eternal function of the living entities and as the actual liberation of the living being from conditioned life become bereft of all devotional service because of their poor fund of knowledge. In the teachings of Advaita Prabhu, there is no question of fruitive activities or impersonal liberation. Bewildered by the spear of the spell of the material energy, however, persons who could not understand that Advaita Prabhu is non-different Vish Vishnu wanted to follow him with their impersonal conceptions. The attempt of Advaita Chari to punish them is also auspicious. Lord Vishnu and his activities can bestow all good fortune directly and indirectly. Lord Vishnu and his activities can bestow all good fortune directly and indirectly. In other words, being favored by Lord Vishnu and being punished by Lord Vishnu are one and the same because all the activities of Vishnu are absolute. Now, try to understand that. If something is different than something else, how could it be the same? <laughs> but on the absolute platform, the spiritual energy doesn't have relativity, it's absolute. So what appears to be differentiation also has the same benefit. <laughs> so if you get punished by the Lord, if you get blessed by the Lord, which is another form of blessing, it's, it's good. <laughs> we don't see it that way. <laughs> But that's true. <laughs> that's the because whatever the Lord does, He does for the benefit of others. He never acts for the inauspiciousness, or He never acts in such a way that people are not benefited. Even if He kills a demon, that demon gets benefit. Similarly, if He punishes a devotee, that devotee uh, advances. <laughs> Okay. According to some, Mangala was another name of Advaita Prabhu. As the causal incarnation, or Lord Vishnu's incarnation for a particular occasion, <clears throat> he is the supply agent or ingredient of material nature. Did you get that? Supply agent, ingredient. I mean, material nature has many ingredients, 25 actually. So where does that supply come? It comes from Mahavishnu who... And Mahavishnu, and the incarnation of Mahavishnu in this material world is Sri Advaita Acharya. So he, he supplies all the ingredients for what makes up the material world, and which includes our, all the material bodies in the material world, the 8,400,000. Species are made up the, of the five, you know, gross element, the three subtle elements, and in the mind, in the senses, the eleven senses, and the objects of the senses. These are all of the ingredients that make up the material energy. This is all supplied by Mahavishnu, who incarnated in this pastime as Sri Advaita Charya. However, he is not material. All his activities are spiritual. Anyone who hears about and glorifies him becomes glorified himself. For such activities free one from all kinds of misfortune. One should not invest any material contamination or impersonalism in the Vishnu form. Everyone should try to understand the real identity of Lord Vishnu, for by such knowledge one can attain the highest state of perfection. 
Om Gyan Timiranda Sya Gina Jana Sanakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Nyena Tasmai Sri Gurvena Maha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Shaptitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padanti Kam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavari Pasyatya Dezatarine Vancha Kalpa Taruvischa Kripa Sindhu Vebacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm. So the appearance day of one of the Panchatattvas Panchatattva Makam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Sarupa Kam Bhakta Avataram Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakta Shakti Kam So he is Bhakta Avatar. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but he appears as a devotee of the Lord in order to assist the Supreme Lord in his pastimes. Or Lord Chaitanya also appears as a devotee of the Lord, but his mood is different than Sri Advaita's. Advaita is to facilitate everything that Shri, uh, Lord Chaitanya does. And Lord Chaitanya's mood is to show the principles of pure devotional service by exhibiting uh, the characteristics of the pure devotee in all activities he performs and teaches by example. And the same as Sri Advaita Charya. So on our altar, the Lord has appeared in three manifestations of himself. Lord Chaitanya is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Krishna, Lord Nityananda is the Supreme Personality of Godhead Balaram. And Sri Advaita Charya is the Supreme Personality of Godhead Mahavishnu, whose man who manifests himself in order to bring about the work of creation. <laughs> But Sri Advaita Charya has another combined nature, and it's mentioned here. He is also the original Shiva. Um, there are many Shivas in different universes, but there is one Shiva called Sadashiva. Sadashiva is the spiritual Shiva who manifests himself in assisting, bringing about the creation. He is coming from Mahavishnu, and in one sense he's not different than Mahavishnu, but he is still a separate entity because he plays a particular role in bringing about the creation. What is that role? When Mahavishnu wants to create, after the interim period of annihilation, and all the living entities are back into the body of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, when it's time for the next creation, Mahavishnu glances in the direction of the Pradhan. The Pradhan is the aggregate of all <clears throat> of the elements that make up the material energy. In that Pradhan, they are no, there's no movement. It's simply um, what we say, everything is in a conglomerate form. There's no separation between the elements. But that glance is taken and carried by <clears throat> the Ramadevi, who is the consort of, Ma of Mahavishnu. And in that glance, there are three elements. There are the time factor, there are the living entities, us, all living entities that are in the body of Mahavishnu are in that glance. And there is also Lord Shiva. He is also there. That's why Shiva is also called the father of all living entities because he helps to bring about that creation also. And then when that glance hits Pradhan, Pradhan is agitated, just like when the male connects with the female, the female becomes agitated. And through that agitation, there is, in, there is what we say, a 
a transformation of energy and through that transformation of energy there is birth. So the living entities are injected the same, the same thing we see in this material world when husband and wife come together to produce a child. The male connects with the female. The female carries the body within her. That's called her embryo. The male injects the energy, and in that energy there is the spirit soul. So that spirit soul enters the body, and then as soon as the, the uh, enters the womb, and as soon as it does, there is development of the body in which is there lying in the in the in the womb of the mother and then it starts to develop it starts off with a little tiny pea you were that big when at one point really there were nine holes in your body and you were that size that was your original size <laughs> and then you expand and that is called growth and then nine months later there you are yeah crying and everybody saying, there he is, there she is, oh, it's my kid. But the same way happens to this material energy because <clears throat> that Pradhan is the, like, it's called Devi Pat. Devi Pat is, Devi is the energy of Shiva. She is what Shakti, she is. In that energy, all the ingredients are there and as soon as that energy connects with the source of its energy, then everything starts to move, and then once it moves, then Lord Brahma comes and he formulates the different bodies, taking the 8,400,000 species of life. And according to whatever particular karma you had in your previous manifestation before the annihilation came, now you're again reconnecting with activities in the material world, and then you start all over again. Because you're eternal. <laughs> so this is, and then Brahma puts all the bodies together and Vishnu arranges through his transcendental knowledge which living entity goes into which particular body according to your karma in, your last, in the last manifestation. So that is, and that, that personality who performs that, that's Mahavishnu, and he incarnates as, <clears throat> as in Sri Advaita Charya, <laughs> in Lord Chaitanya's pastime. So this is because it's nice to know the identity of the personalities. Although he appears to be an assistant, he is also called Bhakta Avatar. He performs the role of a devotee. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu knows who Advaita Acharya is. And therefore, in the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya, in association with Advaita Acharya, he would always honor Advaita Acharya and give him all respects and even attempt to worship him. Advaita Acharya now is in the role of <clears throat> a devotee he doesn't want to be honored by the Supreme Lord. He wants to honor the Supreme Lord. He wants to worship the Supreme Lord. So he is unhappy that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is worshiping him as the Supreme Lord. So he makes a plan to change Lord Chaitanya's mind. <laughs> and we'll talk about that later. <laughs> right now we'll go back to that, that <clears throat> in the area of Navadweep, at that particular time, there were many persons, Jai Sri Advaita Charya Ki Jai Sri Panchatattva Ki Jai. Sri Advaita Charya wanted to bring benedictions to the world. He, in his mood, is Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva is the father of all living entity. Lord Shiva is the manifestation of complete compassion. Lord Shiva is always thinking how to benefit the conditioned souls in this material world. So in his mood as Lord Shiva, he was seeing that in Navadvipa at that time, People were very materialistic. 
they were worshipping demigods. <clears throat> and their desire was to worship the demigods and to get material benedictions, benedictions because it mentions that if you want material benedictions, and according to what benediction you want, you worship a particular type of demigod. For Indra, if you want powerful sex life, you worship Indra. If you want, uh, if you want wealth, you worship the Vasus. If you want good family, you worship the Prajapatis. Mm -hmm. So the different, it's mentioned also in the Bhagavatam that the different demigods can be worshipped for material benefits. Of course, Bhagavatam, after mention it, says that this is not the actual goal of life. The actual goal of life is to get out of the material world and not pray for more, more material benedictions, which entrenches the living entity more and more in the bodily concept of life, which causes them to take birth after birth after birth. So when Sri Advaita Charya was seeing this, and there was hardly any devotees at the time. Sri Vastakor was there. Uh, <clears throat> who else was there? Was Haridas Thakur was also there at the time. And a few other devotees of Lord Chaitanya who had come before Lord Chaitanya to set the stage for his, for his appearance. And now they were very few. And most of the city of Navadweep was very, very interested in material advancement. It was the bastion of learning throughout the entire subcontinent of India. People would go to Navadweep to get the highest materialistic educations. They had some of the best universities there and some of the best and most greatest scholars. Sarvamomaj Bhattacharya was one such scholar who lived there. And there were many, many others. Now Advaita, he's seeing these living entities, which are his children, suffering in this material world, thinking that they're enjoying. See, material life teaches you that you can be happy by arranging the material energy in such a way as to find some kind of satisfaction and happiness. Material energy teaches you that suffering is enjoyment. Very well. <laughs> That's called maya, or illusion. When you see something that is actually meant for your defeat, but it's presented as something for your benefit, you become fooled, and you accept that as being uh, for your benefit, and there you go for that, and that is called Maya. So Maya's whole material show is to somehow or other attract the living entities for various types of enjoyment, which simply leads to their suffering. That's all. <laughs> That's all. That's material life. <laughs> when you understand that, then you can understand that there's no happiness in this material world, <laughs> which is being mentioned throughout the scriptures over and over and over again. Krishna says it twice in the Bhagavad Gita. Dukalayam ashasratam, this place is miserable and is temporary. Anitya asubam, he says the same thing again a little later in the Gita. Uh, but we don't get it. <laughs> Somehow we still don't get it. We still believe there's some happiness somewhere. And if we just keep looking, we'll find it. <laughs> Nobody's found it yet, but I'm different. <laughs> because the desire is so strong to enjoy, the idea that there is enjoyment forces one to believe there is. It's because of the job. desire is strong, and that causes one to believe that there is. But there is enjoyment. And there is happiness, and there's unlimited happiness, because as you mentioned, that this desire is there. That desire is natural, but it's not in material arrangements or in material activities. It's in spiritual activities. And that's where the enjoyment lies. So Advaita is seeing all of these living entities who are his children suffering, 
Now he's thinking, what can I do? Then he thought, let me just take my chakra and cut off all their heads. <laughs> he became angry. When Lord Shiva, you know, he gets angry sometimes. But he thought, no, that's not the way to do it. <laughs> that was his feeling at one point. And then he decided, well, this is the work of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna himself. And it just so happened, it was the time for Lord, for Lord Krishna to descend in, in order to taste his internal mood of Srimati Radharani as the pleasure potency of his own self in the role of a devotee. So now, because of the timing and the Dvaita Charya's calling, the Lord Chaitanya appeared. But how did he call? He went to the banks of the Ganges, Ganges River, the most sacred river running through the area of Navadweep. He sat down in a very in lotus position and he put a Shiva Linga there and he was worshipping um, the Supreme Personality of Godhead with tulsi leaves and sandalwood pulp offering it to the Shiva Linga and throwing it into the Ganga as an offering to the Supreme Lord to please come to this material world and save all of your parts and parcels. They are suffering. Now this is the compassion of the Lord. The Lord never forgets the living entity is suffering in the material world. And he's always, and I use the word with emphasis, he's always trying to get us out of the suffering. Constantly, every moment. But we sometimes don't see that because we're looking for material happiness yet. And therefore we miss his mercy. So, now though he, those flowers, tulsi leaves, sandalwood pulp. There was sandalwood pulp and, and tulsi leaves on the flowers he was offering. <laughs> they were floating downstream. Now those flowers were going to a particular bathing ghat where Sachimata, the mother of Lord Chaitanya to be, she wasn't at that time, was taking her bath every day. And she was pregnant. And every time she would be, sit, be in the water, one of the flowers would hit her womb, her stomach, where the baby was. And as soon as that happened, she had a miscarriage. <clears throat> and that happened eight times in a row. Therefore, it mentions before Lord Chaitanya came, there were eight girls. They were all miscarriages just before the birth of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So what was Advaita Acharya? He was speeding along the uh, advent of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <clears throat> but uh, but Sachi Mata was thinking, I'm having pregnancy and I'm losing all my children. What's happening? Eight in a row. And finally a boy was born, and that was Sarup, Vishnu Rup. And he was in a plenary expansion of Lord Balaram. He was, and he became the older brother of Lord Chaitanya. And then Lord Chaitanya appeared. When Lord Chaitanya appeared, actually, Hashila Haridas Thakur was also chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra at the place of Shantipur. He would meet with Advaita Charya, and they would both pray for the for the advent of Lord Chaitanya both of them together. So when the news came that Lord Chaitanya had actually taken birth over this, in the house of uh, Jagannath Mishra and, and Sachi Mata, <clears throat> Advaita Charya became happy and him and Haridas Dakura had a festival. <laughs> they started to dance <laughs> and they were dancing and dancing and dancing. And then Advaita his wife, Sita Devi, she actually wanted to come and visit the child and bring gifts. And so she would regularly come along with other ladies from the villages to give gifts to Mother Sachin Mata at the time of the birth of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
So Sita, Sita Takarani, she is known as, Dwaita had two, two wives. Sita Takarani was the main one. Dwaita Charya also had children. He had six children. <laughs> one was Achyutananda, one was Krishna Misra, and the other one was Gopal. Three, these three were great Vaishnavas. He had three more. One was called Balaram, one was Jagadish, and one was Sarup. These three, although they were born to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they actually became impersonalists. It's interesting that the Supreme Lord, he had six children, three of them were impersonalists, and three of them were actually became great Vaishnavas. And therefore, Advaita Acharya rejected those other three, and they were called Asara, useless, because they didn't follow the teachings of their father, they thought their father was an impersonalist and they were practicing impersonalism. So it's interesting that even the Supreme Lord himself can have children who is an or impersonalist. I mean Krishna had one son called Bomasura and he became a demon. <laughs> Well, you know, you, later you got killed, so he got purified. But <laughs> yeah, and so uh, the Supreme Lord, you know, Prahlad Maharaj was born in a, a family of demons. And he was a great devotee, so sometimes demons are born in families of devotees, and devotees are de born in family of demons. <laughs> Kali Yuga. That wouldn't happen in previous ages, that's only in Kali Yuga. How, of course, Prahlad Maharaj was different. He appeared in the, I believe, in the in the Satya Yuga. <clears throat> so now the Supreme Lord had appeared, and there are many, many wonderful pastimes. As we mentioned earlier, Sri Advaita Charya was the Supreme Lord, is the Supreme Lord, and Lord Chaitanya knew that. So he would always want to find ways to honor and worship Advaita Charya. But Advaita Charya didn't want to be honored and worshipped by Lord Chaitanya. So he decided, what can I do? There's nothing that I do changes his mind. I try so many different things and he still worships me and honors me. And this is interesting because a devotee doesn't want to get honored and worshipped. To honor and worship a devotee is proper, but for the devotee to be honored and worshipped, they, they're not interested in that. But sometimes they accept it only to make other people happy. <laughs> they do it as a service to others, but otherwise, uh, they are in more, a, a real devotee is always wants to worship and not be worshipped. <laughs> So what to do? So he decided, hmm, Lord Chaitanya, he doesn't like impersonalist philosophical teachings. So he went every night to hear from one scripture called Yoga Vashishta. This Yoga Vashishta teaches that karma and gyan is superior to bhakti. <laughs> Now Lord Chaitanya you know, came to teach that bhakti is the goal of life and karma and gyan support bhakti. But that's their best principle, that's their best position. They can only support bhakti, but they, bhakti can exist without karma and gyan, but karma and gyan do help a neophyte devotee come to the stage of bhakti. That's all. That's all what karma and gyan can do. But one who attains bhakti, there's no need for karma and gyan anymore. <laughs> Knowledge and renunciation. <clears throat> so now, he's going every night. And then Lord Chaitanya finds out, oh, what is Advaita doing? 
I've come to teach pure devotional service as explained in, in Srimad Bhagavatam and he is now glorifying by his activities in personalism. So Lord Chaitanya decided I have to teach him a lesson. Seems like when I talk, you go to sleep, and when I stop, you wake up. <laughs> I guess maybe that's a good sign. <laughs> Is it, do I speak so nicely that I just put you to sleep? <laughs> okay, maybe we can just take a five minute break and everybody goes to sleep, and then we'll come back, and then we'll do silent meditation for a while. <laughs> no, that won't work. Lord Chaitanya wouldn't like that. <laughs> so, Lord Chaitanya said to Lord Nityananda, let's go see a dueta. He's in Shantipur. So they went. So they're traveling. They're walking along the banks of the Ganga. And as they're passing, and they see a little hut, and Lord Nityananda says, who lives in that hut there? I mean, Lord Chaitanya says to Lord Nityananda, who, who, who resides in this little hut? Seems very nice. Oh, Nityananda said, oh, there's one sannyasi, he lives there. Oh, really? Let's go see him. So they go in, and the sannyasi there, he's an elderly person. They sit down, and, and uh, the sannyasi look, welcomes them. And so Lord Chaitanya said, my guess, being with a sannyasa, he's thinking like this. I think we should ask him some questions because, you know, you approach a sannyasi to get knowledge. So Lord Chaitanya says to the sannyasi, uh, my dear revered sannyasi, what is the goal of life? Interesting. <laughs> Never know what's going to happen next. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, the sannyasi says, the goal of life is to be happy. And Lord Chaitanya says, well actually the goal of life is to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna. Sannyasi said, the goal of life is to be happy by eat, drink, and be merry. <laughs> and Lord Chaitanya starts to argue with him. But then Lord Nityananda says, no, 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 let's not argue. We just can't, we're, we're peaceful. <laughs> so Lord Nityananda says to Lord Chaitanya, ask him if he can prepare some prasadam for us. Oh, okay. So they ask him, now, my dear Mr. Sanyasi, can you offer us some foodstuffs? Sure. Happy to honor my guests with nice food. So he calls his wife, the Sanyasi is a, he's a Grihasta Sanyasi. <laughs> and his wife comes out and with a plate of prashadam, supposed prashadam, anyway, foodstuffs. And uh, <clears throat> Lord Chaitanya looks at it and says, hmm, hmm. Well, actually, you know, I've been fasting today, so please just give me a little fruit, that's all. No, no, you're my guest, you should take prasadam. And then Lord Chaitanya says, oh, Okay, Lord Nityananda, so they agree. So they begin. And then the sannyasi says, Would you like some bliss? bliss. And Lord Chaitanya says to Lord Nityananda, what does he mean by bliss? <laughs> Lord Nityananda says, he wants to know if you want some alcohol, <laughs> some vino, <laughs> good stuff, 100%. <laughs> and Lord Chaitanya looks at Lord Nityananda and says, it's time to go. <laughs> 
So they ran out. And when they ran out, they ran right to the Ganges, and with their clothes on, they dove into the Ganges because they felt we'd just been contaminated by such inauspicious association. So after some time, they dry off, and then they're on their way to Shantipur. They follow the, the Ganga. The Ganga leads right to Shantipur. Finally, they get to Shantipur, and, and then they start approaching the house of Sri Advaita Charya. Maybe some of you have been there. Have you been to the house of Sri Advaita Charya? One? Anybody? Two? Yeah. Yeah. No? Not yet? If you go every year for the Mayapur festival, right at the end of the Mayapur festival, just prior, two, two or three days before Lord Chaitanya's appearance day, um, there's a big festival organized by the devotees in Mayapur at, the, at, Lord, at Sri Advaita Charya's abode. And then the devotees come with truckloads of prasadam, halava and kitri, and one year 60,000 people showed up, and we fed all 60,000 of them. Kavi Raj, I'm sorry, Kavi Chandra Maharaj, he organizes this festival every year. He was the idea, he was the one that actually brought this festival about. And so devotees go every year to feed all the residents of, of, of Shantibur. So it's a wonderful opportunity to visit the home of Advaita Charya. There's a beautiful temple there, along with his place of residence. So the devotees go. So uh, Lord Chaitanya arrives, and they approach the house of Advaita. And now Advaita is sitting in the courtyard, and Sita Devi's there, and also Srila Haridas Thakur is also there. And then Lord Chaitanya looks. And he's looking at a dueta. And he's really looking. <laughs> and he is. And his eyes are getting like red. Bright red. And he just runs. <laughs> full speed to a dueta. Jumps on a dueta and starts beating him. And Sita starts freaking out. Oh my God, my Lord, what are you going to do? He's an old man. You're going to kill him. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't hear anything. <laughs> he just kept beating him. And the Dwaita was thinking, Ah, he's finally accepting me as his servant. This is wonderful. <laughs> and Haridas Thakur was laughing. <laughs> so, finally, Lord Chaitanya realize, what am I doing? Why am I beating a dueta? And he stopped. And he turns to a dueta and he says, a dueta, you know I've, can I've come to teach pure devotional service in the form of the glorification of the holy name of Krishna. And you're, you're illustrating and supporting this yoga vashishta, which is simply karma and gyan, it's impersonalism. And Lord Dwaita Acharya said, My dear Lord, thank you for accepting me as your servant. <laughs> so he made that arrangement just to get to the position of being seen as subordinate to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because, because Lord Chaitanya was worshipping Dwaita as the Supreme Lord, the, the devotees were also following Lord Chaitanya. And that was becoming difficult for Advaita. So, in order to illustrate his heart, he did a little trick. <laughs> one time, Lord Chaitanya received a note from one of his messengers. In the note, it had two, set, two, two lines. It says, Sri Advaita Acharya is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but he owes 300 rupees to the king of Jagannath Puri. <laughs> that was the note. And the note was brought by the assistant of Jagannath, of, uh, of Dwaita called Kamala Vishwashu. Lord Chaitanya read that note and he became very upset. He said, what is this? The Supreme Personality of Godhead is known as a debtor. 
he has a debt. How can the Supreme Personality of Godhead have a debt in the material world? He became angry. <laughs> and he chastised Kamala Vishvasu. You are saying that Sri Advaita Charya is the Supreme Lord, but you're also calling him an ordinary debtor. You are a fool. Not only a fool, you are an offensive fool. <laughs> and so Kamala Vishwasu lost all the mercy. <laughs> and then Lord, Lord Dwaita, when he found out, he said, you know, please don't punish my servant. He said, he's just an ignorant fool. <laughs> That's all. And so Lord Chaitanya eventually forgave him. But that was an important point, that the Supreme Lord... Although he plays the role in the material world, and sometimes he performs activities in the material world, none of his activities are material. And if there's a, some parent connection with the material energy, it's simply transcendental. It has nothing to do with anything material. Hmm. Okay, let me see some of the other wonderful pastimes of Sri Dwaita Acharya. Sri Advaita Charya took shelter of Madhavendra Puri. Madhavendra Puri is the Param Guru of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And by his appearance, the whole process of pure devotional service appeared in that area of the world. Madhavendra Puri is a very intimate and very highly developed personality in the spiritual world. He is a kalpa vriksha tree. In the spiritual world there are trees that you go and you can go into that, up to that tree and say, my dear tree, I want this, and the tree will give you whatever you ask for. Prabhupada uses the example, in this world if you go to a lemon tree and you ask for mangoes, you get lemons. <laughs> In other words, whatever the tree is made for, it supplies in this world. But in the spiritual world, the trees give you whatever you ask for. So if you go to a lemon tree in the spiritual world and ask for a mango, you get nice mangoes. <laughs> so that is this. So that personality who incarnated in this material world as Madhavendra Puri his eternal relationship with Krishna in the spiritual world is these Kalpa Viksha trees. So he came to introduce pure devotional service and to bring about the advent of Lord Chaitanya. Advaita Charya was, he was 125 years old when he left the planet. Lord Chaitanya was, he was 52 years old when Lord Chaitanya took birth in this world. So he was quite old, and before then he had taken shelter of Madhavendra Puri. He met Madhavendra Puri, and he took initiation from Madhavendra Puri. And therefore the god-brother of, and this is also a very interesting point, the god-brother of, of Advaita Charya was Ishwar Puri, who was the spiritual master of Lord Chaitanya. So Advaita Charya and Ishwar Puri were god brothers, and therefore another reason why Lord Chaitanya treated Advaita because he was on the level of his spiritual master. He was on the level of the spiritual master of Lord Chaitanya, and therefore Lord Chaitanya also saw Dwaita as being equal to his spiritual master, Ishwar Puri, because they were God brothers, both disciples of Madhavendra Puri. <laughs> so it's interesting. Um, Srila Prabhupada, in his early days, performed one particular drama in Navadweep in his early days. This was before he even met his spiritual master. And in that drama, he played the role of Advaita Charya. And when 
people were watching our Srila Prabhupada perform the activities of Advaita Charya in this dramatic performance, they were crying. <laughs> crying, saying, out of such, that Prabhupada was performing so much, because Advaita Charya is the person who brought Lord Chaitanya to this world. Lord Chaitanya came because he was requested by Advaita Charya to come, and that's mentioned in the Shastras. Srila Prabhupada brought Lord Chaitanya to the world. So in that role of Advaita Charya, when he was a young man, he was actually preparing for his role. Later on in life, what he would bring Lord Chaitanya to the entire world by bringing the Krishna consciousness movement to the entire world. So when the people were watching this dramatic performance, they were crying because Prabhupada played the part so well that people were actually feeling the presence of Advaita Charya by Srila Prabhupada's performance. Uh, yeah. One time Sri Advaita Charya, knowing that Lord Chaitanya was the Supreme, and Lord, Lord Chaitanya never wanted to be known as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He wanted to be known as a great, uh, as a devotee of the Lord and be, be understood in that way. The reason why Lord Chaitanya never performed the activities externally, he did once in the house of Srivas, and that was the Mahaprakash Leela. Other than that one pastime, he was always in the mood of being the Supreme, not the Supreme Lord, but the, a devotee of the Supreme Lord. But Advaita Charya knew, I want to worship him as the Supreme Lord. So one time, all the devotees were together, and uh, Advaita came and said, let's have kirtan. But today we won't be chanting Hare Krishna, we're going to be chanting Goranga. Goranga. <laughs> we're going to be chanting Goranga. Goranga, Goranga, Goranga. What's the matter? You all sleeping? Come on, Goranga, 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 Goranga. Goranga. Simply by chanting Goranga, you get the mercy of Goranga. <laughs> it's very auspicious. Even somebody here tried to get in. That was that was Sri Devi. She's trying to get into the class. <laughs> Thank you, Sri Devi. <laughs> yeah, Goranga. So he was. So all the devotees were thinking. Oh my God, if Lord Chaitanya hears worse chanting Goranga, he's not going to be happy. He's going to. But Advaita was so forceful. So the devotees finally followed Advaita and they start chanting Goranga, Goranga, Goranga. And they were having Kirtan chanting Goranga. <laughs> we do that sometimes. And then Lord Chaitanya was away, but then from a distance he could hear the kirtan, and so he started getting closer. He said, oh, they're having kirtan. Let me go. So he starts getting closer and closer and closer, and then he starts listening. What are they chanting? They're not chanting Krishna's name. What? He gets close. Oh, no. So he looks, and he sees the devotees, and then as soon as Advaita sees Lord Chaitanya coming, and all the devotees were there. All the devotees started to stop chanting. But Lord Dwaita said, no, no, chant more, chant more, chant more. And he was really like... So the devotees were following Dwaita, and Lord Chaitanya just turned around and left. <laughs> <laughs> and so and then he went back to his place, closed the door, and went to sleep. <laughs> After some time, Sri Vastakur came, and he came to see Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya came out, 
And then immediately the first thing he said to Srivasa, why are the devotees chanting that name? Why don't they chant Krishna's name? So Srivas went. Held his hand up. And he was putting it in the direction of the sun. It was during the day. So Lord Chaitanya said, What are you doing? I'm covering the sun with my hand. You can't do that. It's not possible. Yes, you're right, my Lord. And, no, and at the same time, you can't hide from us. <laughs> you can't hide from us. And Lord Chaitanya was silent. He didn't say anything. <laughs> he acknowledged, yeah. So that was Advaita Charya. Advaita Charya always wanted to glorify Lord Chaitanya like that. Well, one time when, when, when Lord Chaitanya was traveling, he was actually, this is when he took sannyas. So he uh, decided, let me go to Vrindavan. But Lord Nityananda tricked him and brought him to Shantipur instead. <laughs> and he took him to the Ganga, and Lord Chaitanya, he was in ecstasy, so he didn't know really where he was. And Lord, and Lord Nityananda said, this is Jamuna. We're in Vrindavan. <laughs> and Lord Chaitanya said, wow. So he started bathing in the Ganga to get the mercy of the Ganga. And uh, Haribo and Antaji. Goranga. 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 I was just reading last night that if you chant Go Ranga, you get a lot of mercy. <laughs> I was just reading, yeah. So, Lord Chaitanya is bathing in the Gang Ganges. And then Advaita, it's in the area of Dwaita's house, but he's, he's, Lord Chaitanya thinks he's in Vrindavan. And Dwaita comes in a boat with some dry clothes for Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya looks and says, Advaita, you're here in Vrindavan. And Advaita said, no, this is not Vrindavan, this is Shantipur. But actually, wherever you are, my dear Lord, it's Vrindavan. <laughs> and then Lord Chaitanya realized he wasn't in Vrindavan. He was in Shantipur and he got, he got angry at Lord Nityananda for tricking him. But Dwaita said, come on, I have prepared some nice foodstuffs for you. Please come to my home and I'll have some dry clothes. So Lord Chaitanya got in the boat and he took him to the home of Lord, Lord Nityananda. And Lord Dwaita had cooked this huge feast for Lord Chaitanya. And then, because this was a plot by Lord Nityananda and Dwaita to get, uh, to get Lord Chaitanya to come to the house of, uh, of Dwaita. So, Lord Chaitanya is there and he said, give me some vyajana, which means just some simple vegetable. He spoke in Bengali. And Lord Ch and Advaita said, no, I've cooked you this wonderful feast. Please, just honor a little bit. So Lord Chaitanya is looking at it and thinking, I just be, took sannyas and I have, this is, a, this is not for sannyasis, this is for, you know, for people who want to enjoy their senses. <laughs> so he didn't say anything. Yeah. Then Lord Nityananda spoke up and said, Advaita, I've been fasting for three days and I've come to your home for prasadam and look, there's nothing to eat. I, it looks like I have to fast again. <laughs> and Lord Advaita said, you are just a reject Paramahansa. <laughs> and Lord Nityananda picked up some rice that was in the bowl and he threw it on the floor. And the grain, some of the grains bounced and 
stuck to the leg of a Dwaita and he started to dance. Getting hit with the thrown rice of Lord Nityananda, he was dancing in ecstasy. <laughs> so they were having their special little exchange. So there was an argument going on between them. Now it says that when two great personalities argue, if you take the side of any one of them, you're finished. <laughs> because you never know what's going on in that argument. It may just be a mock argument or it may be something, something you can't even understand. So when, when pers great personalities disagree, stay out of it. <laughs> and so that's mentioned in that particular pastime. So Lord Nityananda and Lord Sri Adeta were arguing and they were calling each other names. <laughs> and you, you're following me? I'm going. <laughs> you're not coming. <laughs> well, uh, we can't let you go. <laughs> I'm going. Please stay a little longer. Stay three or five more days. Lord Chaitanya said, all right. <laughs> so he turned around and stayed three or five. And during those five days, they had kirtan continuously at the house of Advaita Acharya. And Prabhupada writes in one particular purport in that section that every night they would have three hours of kirtan in the home of Advaita Acharya. And Prabhupada writes, no, 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 actually, they were having a kirtan every, all through the, through the evening, all through the morning, and they were just having kirtan. Prabhupada writes in one purport, in that particular narration, he says, in our temples, every night we should have three hours of kirtan. This should be done in every temple in our society. We should establish this immediately. Adiwo, you like that? Yeah, that's written as a purport in Chaitanya Charitamrita. And I could actually give you the reference. It's in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Hmm. Madhya 3, verse 106, I think it is. Something like that. But I, I can find it. So Prabhupada says we should establish media. Each Every temple should have three hours of kirtan every night. If we did that in our temples, there wouldn't be any problems. <laughs> the reason why we have so many problems is because we don't do enough kirtan. <laughs> Fortunately, this temple, I must say, out of all the temples I've visited, is one of the most kirtan temples. But the reason why is for two reasons. The temple president understands Lord Chaitanya's mood. <laughs> so he's got, he keeps Lord Chaitanya's, you know, Yuga Dharma alive here with kirtans, harinams, festivals as much as possible. And that's Lord Chaitanya's mood. If you want to worship Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Panchatantra, Sri Krishna Kirtan, that's it, that's it. Harinam, 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 Eva Keva Lom, Kalom, Nasteva, 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 Gatir Anyata. That is the Yuga Dharma, and that will also purify the atmosphere and attract the conditioned souls to, to Krishna consciousness. Kirtan is our life. And we should learn to make the best and most tasty prasadam that when people come here and eat the prasadam, they can't go. <laughs> they don't want, they won't go to any restaurant, they won't go back home, they'll throw all their pots and pans away, utensils, everything, they'll close their kitchen, they'll come to our temple and just take prasadam all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so I think if we can, you know, jack up the quality of the prasadam a little bit better here, it will be so nice that people will not leave. Yeah, really. Prabhupada said, you know, make it so nice that they'll keep coming back for more and more and more 
we could get, you know, we can get, uh, <clears throat> um, we can get um, uh, Lalita Govinda to make ice cream with chocolate cover on the top, <laughs> and then we can sprinkle some some kind of like nice colors on the top to make it even nicer. Um, and then we can get Lolita Govinda to cook some of his pizzas <laughs> with vegan cheese. <laughs> some of them, half and half, you know, because <laughs> there's a lot of vegans out there. <laughs> anyway, we can make prasadam so nice that people don't want to leave, yeah. That's how, that's what Prabhupada did in the beginning. I mean, we were, we were eating like, the devotees were eating really nicely. Poris and kachoris and koras and pushpan rice and what else? And chutneys and you know, sweet rice and, and ladus and burfi and sandash and rubbery and once in a while a chapati. <laughs> So many nice prasha. The devotees used to eat so nice in the old days. I mean, we Prabhupada, I mean, really gave... I mean, that was their feast. I mean, during the week, we would be a little bit more simpler. But making these nice prashadams, and then you'll have to build a, build a bigger building just to accommodate people during the Sunday feast. <laughs> yeah, prashadam is very attractive. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that's his mood. Distribute the holy name of the Lord and distribute everywhere and distribute prasadam everywhere. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with his devotees when they would take prasadam, <clears throat> when the disappearance of Srila Haridas Thakur came, the Lord Chaitanya arranged for a big feast and sat all the devotees down. And every, every they had cooked this huge feast and at the same time they had brought tons of prasadam from the Jagannath temple. Kashi Mishra, who was the, who was the caretaker of the, Kad, the Jagannath temple, was also a devotee, and he was arranging for so much of Jagannath's prasadam to come. And Lord Chaitanya sat all the devotees down, and Lord Chaitanya fed everybody by serving them personally. And he would take his hand. Lord Chaitanya's hand was big. You know, mine's like a little tiny mouse compared to his. his. His hand was big and he would go and put it on your plate and that was enough for five people. Just one handful. <laughs> and he would feed the devotees and the devotees would be eating and they would be like uh. Prabhupada said when you're full up to here you're full and when you're full up to here then you're even more full but when you get full up to here that's it. <laughs> <laughs> There's no more room. <laughs> That's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He was into, you know, devotees would feast. I mean, they would really feast. <laughs> we look like we're snacking during the Sunday feast compared to them. <laughs> I mean, really. Because Prashadam was big. Lord Chaitanya taught, yeah. Harinam! And as Prashadam, profuse amounts of Prashadam. <laughs> Like that, chant, dance, and take prasad. <laughs> so, yeah, these, these are some of the pastimes of Sri Advaita Charya. There are many more. Uh, then, after some time, Lord Shait, uh, Lord Nit, uh, no, sorry, Advaita Charya wrote one verse, and he gave it to Jagannanda Pandit, and he said, Jagannanda Pandit, give this verse to Lord Chaitanya. And on the verse, the translation is that, that people are going to the marketplace, but there is no more demand for rice in the marketplace. There's no more demand for rice in the market. So when the devotees read it, and Lord Chaitanya read it, Lord Chaitanya understood it, but none of the devotees could figure out what it meant. And then they turn to Lord Chaitanya for an explanation. You have that verse on your phone? Uh, Alex, you have that verse on your phone? No, I cannot find it. Oh, okay. It's part, yeah, it's there somewhere. Look for it. 
it's yeah, you can look, just just you know just check Advaita Charya uh, disappearance verse for Lord Chaitanya, <laughs> something like that. In that verse, he was indicated, my dear Lord, I have called you, and you have provided everything needed. Now it's time for you to go back to the spiritual world. So Lord Chaitanya, after reading that, he said, Adwaita, he has called me, and now he is asking me to return. And that's the meaning of that verse. And there's no more demand for rice in the, mar in the marketplace. The price of rice is now buyable by everybody. That's what it meant. Before, people could not pay the price, but now as Lord Chaitanya came, he made the price available and everyone is getting what they need. So that was the meaning of that, the internal meaning of that particular verse. So Lord Chaitanya said, now he is asking me to leave. I wish I could remember some more of the wonderful pastimes of Lord Advaita. But please take some time today. It's a fast day and therefore we have more time and more energy and we can now spend some time reading about and hearing more of the wonderful pastimes and activities of Sri Advaita Charya. We get the good fortune every day when we come to the temple to see Sri Advaita Charya in person. The deity form of the Lord is non different than the deity, than the Lord Himself. So he is um, yeah. He is personally present along with Nityananda, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Supreme Lord himself, uh, Gadadhar, the internal energy, Srimati Radharani, and Sri Vastakur, Sri Narada Muni himself appears as Sri Vastakur. So thank you very much. I'm sure, sorry the class was too short. But I think I read at the beginning the eight prayers and glorifying of Lord. I'll read, to close, I'll read the prana mantra of Sri Advaita Acharya. The Sanskrit is in the, the wrong font here, but so I will try to read it anyway. Nistari Sachena Jana Daya Luyam Prema Matabad Parignagya Chitam Chaitanya Trantram Datam Architam Tam Advaita Charya Shirasrasa Shirasa Namami Translation This is from Sri Gora Govinda Charana Srimala Pandita Padati Padati from Srila Dhyana Chandra Goswami. With my head at his feet, I offer my humble obeisances unto the merciful Sri Advaita Chandra, whose heart is drowned in the ocean of Prem. He delivers infinite numbers of devotees and is honored and worshipped by Sri Chaitanya Chandra. That's, that's the Pranam Mantra for Sri Advaita Charya. When Srila Prabhupada <clears throat> was about to leave for America, before he left his area in India, he went to the house of Advaita Charya. And there he prayed very seriously. And he praying that someday that he will be able to go to the West and bring Sri Advaita Charya's teachings, which is Lord Chaitanya's teachings, to the Western world. There was one Pujari <coughs> who was seeing Prabhupada every day. He was the Pujari at Advaita's temple. Prabhupada would sit in the back of the temple and sit there all alone and pray and chant. <coughs> and that, that, that Pujari was always wondering, who is this person coming? He comes and he sits and he just sits there and prays all by himself. And after some time he, gets, he just leaves. So, and then at one point, he came up to Prabhupada and asked him, 
you know, who are you? I can see you coming every day and you're praying at the house of Advaita Charya, his temple. Uh, he said, yes, my spiritual master has given me a mission. And, and I'm praying for the success of my mission at the lotus feet of Sri Advaita Charya. <clears throat> he didn't tell him the mission. Later on, many, many years later, after Srila Prabhupada left the planet, some of the devote, one devotee came to the house of Advaita Charya, who was a disciple of Srila Prabhupada. And <clears throat> he happened to have a Bhagavad Gita, I'm sorry, a, a Back to Godhead book in his hand. And he, he met that same uh, Pajari, and he gave him the Back to Godhead. When that Back to Godhead hit that Pajari's hand, he looked and he saw the picture of Srila Prabhupada, the same person who had been sitting in his temple every day and praying. And he looked and he said, this is him. He has brought Krishna consciousness to the world. He used to come every day to my temple and sit and pray, and I was always wondering, who is this person? And the devotee said, yes, he is the spiritual master of the whole world. He has brought Lord Chaitanya's teachings to the world. He is a representative of Sri Advaita Charya. That Pujari was in tears. He was so overwhelmed with happiness, seeing that that person he met would soon become one of the greatest proponents of Lord Chaitanya's teachings in the world. Really a nice experience that was. So the connection between Srila Prabhupada and Dvaita Chari is very, very deep. Very, very deep. So thank you very much. This is a little bit of the entire chapter 6 of Adi Leela is all about the life of Advaita Acharya and his teachings. So before I end, I'll just request, is any comments or questions from the devotees? Anything you would like to say? Sri Devi, are you online yet? <laughs> if you are, you can ask your question. She's missing Slovenia. Is it from Sri Devi? No. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. <clears throat> it's from Avaduta Rai, Prabhu. Mm. <clears throat> Some say. Advaita Acharya cannot give Vraja Bhakti and some say he, although Mahavishnu can give Vraja Bhakti because all the associates can bestow it. What do you think? As, yeah, he's the, the incarnation of Mahavishnu comes as Advaita Acharya. He can give Vraja Bhakti. All of the associates of Lord Chaitanya can. They're all empowered by Lord Chaitanya. Yeah? But they're aspects of the same as energy. Uh, as I meant, we mentioned that verse, Pancha Tattva Makam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Sarupa Kam Bhakta Avatar Bhakta Kim Namami Bhakta Shakti Kam. It says the absolute truth is not one, but it's five. And you have the Lord, and then you have His expansion, then you have his, the Lord's devotee, the Lord's energy, and the Lord's, uh, yeah, the Lord's pure devotee also. So each one of these five personalities are a member of the absolute truth. Mm. Mm. They're they're absolute and at the same time part of a of of the collective nature of the absolute truth. The manifestation the expansion, the, the, the avatar, the energy, the pure devotee. 
They're different and non-different simultaneously. Right. And the most, the most mo wonderful thing is they're very merciful. <laughs> Otherwise, it says that if you're having any trouble in Krishna consciousness, just go to Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> He'll make it. He'll make everything easy for you. It's a lot of mercy. Wherever Lord Chaitanya is, the mercy flows, and where the Panchatattva is, the mercy flows in big waves. <laughs> yeah, a lot of mercy here. <clears throat> Take advantage of it. Yes, Alex. Oh, you're just holding your hand up like this. Oh, okay. All right, you balanced now? <laughs> okay. All right, stay balanced. <laughs> if, you, if you become imbalanced, just pray to Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> and the other comments or questions? Nothing, and nothing more from the external environment, the devirial world, no? No, yeah, I, I have a question, Maharaj. Okay. So you are mentioning that if two great souls are arguing that we should not, we should go away because we, we, should, we should not take sides. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes I wonder, you know, the supreme personality of Godhead, they even, f they even fight between each other, like physically fight. Like. Yeah, that's just play, though. That's interesting. I was thinking of this, but still, it's. Uh, <laughs> it's Leela. <laughs> Yeah, you, you you see it one way, but it's not like that. It's actually their leelas. Hmm. <clears throat> I get. I was thinking of a particular story where Prabhupada was in was in was in Mayapur area. <clears throat> And it was one god brother who would come to see him all the time because he meant there's many temples around there of the Gaudiya Math. So this god brother would come <clears throat> and he would always talk <clears throat> about things that Prabhupada was not interested to hear. <laughs> Mundane talk or talking about this and that. So Prabhupada didn't want to, didn't want to associate with him anymore. And so he told Shruti Kirti, his servant, you know, if he comes, you know, just tell him that I'm not here. Or I'm resting or something, you know. Don't allow him. So one day he came and he said, I want to come and see Swamiji. Shruti Kirti said, well, I actually I think he's resting and uh, so maybe it's not a good time. And then the, the uh, this devotee said, no, no, he said I can come any time. So I'm here, tell him I'm here. <laughs> and so Shruti Kirti is trying to, you know, tell him, you know, you can't go. You can't see Prabhupada, it's not available. And then Prabhupada walks out, <laughs> and comes out. And the man, this, this, this god brother Prabhupada, he said, I came to see you, and he's, telling, he's trying to stop me. And Prabhupada turned to Shruti Kirti, why are you trying to stop him? <laughs> Come. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shruti Kirti didn't know what to say. Yeah, yeah, all right, whatever you say, Prabhupada. <laughs> so it's like that sometimes. <laughs> Don't take signs. <laughs> you tell your assistant to do something and they do it and you'd say, why did you do this? <laughs> <laughs> and he's supposed to say, yeah, you're right, why am I doing this? <laughs> Not any, if you want to go back to Godhead, that's what it takes. <laughs> <laughs>
Mukunda, you know all about that. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. And Panchitattva Makam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Sarupa Kam Bhakta Avataram Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakti Shakti Kam Sri Panchitattva Ki Jai Sri Advaita Acharya Mahamahotsa Avir Bhav Ki Jai Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Ki Jai